Okay, hello, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining. This is uh, Andrew Davis from Inside DevOps. I'm delighted to have a chance to be covering some of the hot topics that have come up during Dreamforce this year. So I'm thrilled to have a chance today to talk more about Salesforce functions. Definitely one of the biggest innovations to happen uh, on the Salesforce platform probably in its history, but I'm delighted to have with me here, uh, Chris Marino is part of the product management team for Salesforce Functions on the Elastic Computing side. As well, we have Pat McQueens, the Senior Vice President at Copado and uh, spent 17 years in the Salesforce ecosystem, deep experience in both the technical and business side. So really excited to get both of your take uh, and understanding of this product. So I just want to level set for everybody in the audience. Hopefully you've already seen some of the announcements at uh, Dreamforce about this, but Salesforce Functions is a totally new way to execute code on the Salesforce platform. It runs Basically, inside the Salesforce platform, you access it. Um, you can access functions from Apex code, for example, but it gives you this elastic computing capability. So it's not limited by the Apex governor limits uh, and allows you to bring in external libraries and use third party code. Um, so, specifically, you can write pure Java code, you can write pure JavaScript or TypeScript code to run these functions. And so it's easy to bring folks who are just a traditionally trained Java or JavaScript developer in to help build powerful computing uh, engines that can do heavy processing jobs. So some of the use cases that I've heard about are um, image processing, artificial intelligence on the back end, batch processing, complex queries, call out. There was a demonstration in the developer keynote about calling out to Google Maps. So incredible set of capabilities. Uh, I'd love to introduce to everybody Chris Marino, uh, part of the product management team again for uh, Salesforce Functions. Chris, Chris, welcome. Great. It's a pleasure to be here, Andrew. And we are very excited about the launch of uh, Salesforce Functions. And as you described, it is being very well received. Now, you're actually at Dreamforce. What's the environment like there? Dreamforce. Yes. So I'm in San Francisco and it's been a while since I've been downtown. Uh, the energy is quite high. The sun is shining. It's beautiful blue sky, sunny South California uh, weather. And uh, the energy is great and a lot of breakout sessions, a lot of activity up and down Third Street in front of Moscone. It's really uh, nice to be almost back, almost back in the tower. <laughs> I think there's about 180,000 people who wish they could be there with you. So uh, we're delighted that Dreamforce is happening for at least this small crew. Chris, uh, tell us a little bit about your background. You came over from the Heroku team, if I understand correctly, but how'd you find your Yes, that's functions? right. I've, I've been uh, with Salesforce for about three years and uh, I actually came from a different industry entirely. I was in the networking business for a long, long time and I wanted to uh, sort of uh, move up the stack, if you will. Uh, and I joined Salesforce to work on a particular project on their infrastructure team. And uh, anyway, I worked on that for a little while. And when this opportunity became available at Heroku, that looked like something I was really quite interested in. So I jumped over and managed the, uh, the private spaces offering inside of the Heroku team. And a good part of that whole team has now been um, uh, refocused around building the entire runtime for Salesforce functions. So a lot of the DNA that allowed you to uh, type git push Heroku master has now sort of been ingrained in Salesforce functions. And, and um, that's uh, kind of what we, uh, we hope to bring uh, the power of Heroku to, uh, uh, to the Salesforce platform. That was a big part of what we set out to do. Hmm. And that feels like that's been a long time coming, right? The acquisition of Heroku is uh, almost eight maybe even 10 years ago. Uh, and the, I think some of the vision was there, but you guys really feel like it's finally coming together with this these capabilities? Absolutely. There, uh, so Heroku, uh, you can run Heroku apps and connect them with Salesforce apps through connected apps and uh, provide a lot of the connectivity on your own. But what Salesforce Functions does is sort of takes away all of the friction related to doing that in a sort of a DIY way. And it automates all the, uh, the certificate exchanges and te technical complexity to establishing that trust relationship between the two ends of the, uh, the environments. And uh, all that work uh, took a great deal of time and effort to get right. And uh, that's really what Salesforce Functions provide. Salesforce Functions provides the elastic runtime that's tightly coupled to the Salesforce platform that allows the two um, environments to interact securely within the Salesforce trust boundary. Great. And then let me see if I've got this right in case anybody's not familiar with the term like elastic compute. It just means okay. that you can use a ton of processing power if you need or less, but and it scales without governor limits. Is that one way of understanding? 
Yes. Elastic runtime, what I mean by that is that it dynamically scales to accommodate the traffic requirements of the moment in very much the way Heroku uh, provides that elastic scale in a platform as a service offering. That feature and capability is built into functions as well. So the user doesn't have to worry about provisioning uh, EC2 instances or load balancers or DNS or any of these other things. It automatically scales just like a platform as a service does. For people who live their lives in the Salesforce uh, ecosystem, they may not even be familiar with EC2 and load balancers and so forth. But basically you're saying there's a ton of complexity that you would have to deal with if you were going to, say, build this on AWS or something like that. And you guys have just taken all of that away. Is that fair? That's exactly right. They literally just write their code and they push it up to the platform and the platform takes care of everything from there on. And that's exactly what Salesforce customers are looking for us to provide. Fantastic. Um, so um, is this GA yet? So is functions generally available? Yes. Well, we've been talking about Salesforce functions for a good while now. And uh, we've uh, recently came out of our beta earlier this year. And uh, we are uh, going to go GA in the 234 release, which is uh, coming up in just a couple of weeks. So uh, in uh, mid-October, when uh, that release is available, you'll be able to order it and uh, enable it on your, org on your orgs. Okay, so can you give us some sense of what are some of the coolest applications you've seen folks building? I know you guys have shared a ton of customers that have already been piloting this, and what are some of the coolest things you've seen people build? Yeah, well, so the demo that was shown at Dreamforce where it goes off and it does the, the calculation for uh, you know the traveling salesman problem, there's an example of a lot of compute-heavy calculations. So that's kind of interesting, and there's a lot of graphics with pins and, and other such things, so that's kind of interesting. But I have to say the most interesting and innovative uh, deployment that I've seen so far is actually one of our customers took an open source library that implemented TensorFlow in JavaScript and had a TensorFlow model that they had been using for some experiments for deduplication and other such things that they prompt that they perform on their Salesforce data. And they ran that TensorFlow uh, machine learning model as a Salesforce function. And that TensorFlow application ran as a JavaScript function as um, uh, connected to their org. So they did that machine learning uh, uh, execution right on the platform. And that actually sparked a whole lot of ideas in terms of uh, all sorts of things uh, that uh, reasonably could be done as functions using uh, the Elastic Compute platform that's available in Function. Wow, that's incredible. And that so teams have total flexibility to build you know, anything that they want with Java, JavaScript, use external libraries. You can bring those in, like you mentioned, this te TensorFlow library. Um, and then making it all seamless. So it's it's easier. It's not just Heroku's easy, Salesforce is easy. Getting them to totally mesh together a little bit more complex, but now you guys have really solved that problem. Yeah, let me let me go into a little bit more detail, uh, detail on that. And it's a really important point for Salesforce developers to understand is that Salesforce functions, when you uh, enable functions for your org, you get a dedicated single tenant runtime environment and what that allows us to do is when the, uh, the, the Apex code that's running uh, invokes a function that's running in that compute environment, the context of that org is actually delivered to the function. So it knows how to call back and fetch data and uh, access uh, the org's data through the uh, Salesforce APIs. So all that complexity of uh, authentication and org context, that is the, the burden of doing all that is off the shoulders of the developer now. And this is all the things that, that were possible with Heroku, but it was a real, real heavy lift to do that in this, in this seamless, trusted, uh, secured environment. And that's what Salesforce Functions delivers out of the box for Salesforce developers today. So Chris, if people want to find out more about Salesforce Functions, where should they go? Yes, so um, they should go to developers.salesforce.com and uh, search for Salesforce Functions. And uh, they'll already be able to see the documentation for the beta release, and that'll be updated by the time we go GA. So that's really the best starting point for actually details of how to work. But also, I'd really like to point out something that we just released this week at Dreamforce, and that is a collection of what we call uh, functions recipes. 
that are little examples of how Salesforce functions can be used and deployed that solve very specific and real world problems that Salesforce developers are facing today. And that's on GitHub. Fantastic. Chris, thank you so much. I'm really grateful to make a connection with you and to learn more about behind the scenes, how the magic has been made to happen with Salesforce functions. My pleasure. And please give our best to everybody at Dreamforce. We all wish we could be there. Will do. Thanks. Thanks so much, Chris. Now, I'm so happy to have a chance to talk to Pat McQueen. So, Pat McQueen, you've been a Salesforce industry veteran for 17 years. You've done tons of different um, things. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background? Thanks so much, Andrew. First of all, fantastic to be here with you and the whole crowd and celebrating Dreamforce. I actually worked for Salesforce for almost 17 years, started there back in 2004. So my first Dreamforce was uh, in fall of 2004. And let me tell you, this was the third time I've seen the Foo Fighters at Dreamforce, and I loved them just as much this time around. Fantastic. Um, so um, you've, during that all of the time, you've had a chance to interact with thousands of Salesforce customers, the technical users, the business users, and so forth. Um, what do you feel is going to be most game-changing about having Salesforce functions? Well, we used to say at Salesforce that Salesforce makes the uh, easy things easy and the hard things possible. Well, Salesforce is changing the game, right? It's no longer hard to have an outside application called. They've made it really simple to extend Salesforce to do anything you really want to. And that is pretty game changing. So we, we talked with Chris about kind of blending the Heroku world over with the Salesforce world. So Heroku users are professional coders and Salesforce folks that we talk about a low code platform, a mix of skills. Um, with functions, then we can see these use cases like invoking functions from flows and having them read and write data from Salesforce. What's your view about how this is going to impact these different development teams, low code and pro code teams? Well, I think it's definitely extending what's possible inside of Salesforce, because a lot of times as the Salesforce team, there were things you wanted to do. You had to actually go out to another system, whether you built that on Heroku or whatever your corporate stack is. Well, now Salesforce has said you never have to leave the family. You're in and you can stay. And they've made it actually even easier to stay. You can build more secure applications if you use functions than if you use Heroku natively, because they're really incorporating that security model. So the security team's gonna want that. So not only is Salesforce making it easier, but they're making it more secure, and they really, really are making it great to stay right within the Salesforce family all the time. So um, we're lucky to have had you join Copato recently uh, to help uh, manage lots of different aspects of our go-to-market activities. and what's, What do you think is the future of uh, Copato helping to support developers, you know, building Salesforce functions in addition to Salesforce metadata. Any thoughts on what that might look like? Absolutely. If you think about Salesforce, they're getting bigger. They're doing more and more, right? So it started with just Sales Cloud, but now we're doing Service Cloud, Commerce Cloud, MuleSoft, Heroku, and even functions. And so as that complexity has grown in Salesforce, so is the demand for DevOps tools. And Capato is on the exact same path, right? We're looking at how do we provide more functionality and even broader functionality going out to a multi-cloud solution. And that's exactly what developers need. You really need to be able to test, you really need to build end-to-end -end business processes. And so if you wanna have your Oracle financials be called by your order entry system that's done through Salesforce billing, you can actually do that with a multi-cloud solution for Capato. And so for us, we're excited to see Salesforce continue to deliver more and more functionality. And we also want to help all of our customers accelerate their digital transformation and by providing that multi-cloud and really, really broad solution to help them both build and then test the applications they're building. So it's awesome for Capato to see them building solutions that are uh, like functions. It really accelerates our business. So Pat, you mentioned about Copato multi-cloud solution. Can you tell us more about that? What's that mean? How does that impact things? Yeah, Copato started really with the core sales cloud service cloud, but we've grown, we've grown with Salesforce. And so now we, we help people like uh, Heroku, MuleSoft with their DevOps challenges. And so we're excited because it's gonna help us as we extend into other platforms like SAP at Copato. And that's back to that end-to-end -end testing. And so to enable that, Capato also has our own functions. We're really excited Salesforce has functions, but our functions are a little bit different. We're really designed to help you with the DevOps problems you have, whether that's scripting, testing, or calling out to actually um, push code in a different way. We're also doing the same thing Salesforce is, which is providing that extendability and extensibility. 
there's really no limit to what you can build with Capado functions or Salesforce functions. For Capado functions, you're really extending that DevOps process, and that's what it's designed to do. And then for Salesforce functions, of course, solving your core business problem. Fantastic. So thank you so much, Pat. Really delighted to have a chance to get your uh, take and your input, having seen so much in the Salesforce world to understand better how Salesforce functions fits in. It is great to see what Salesforce continues to do, and they are absolutely continued to focus on customer success. And that's back to one of our core Copa values as well. So it's great to be aligned and still in the Salesforce ecosystem. And thank you, Andrew, for the time today. So thank you, everybody, so much for joining Inside DevOps. This has been our chance to dig in a little bit more to Salesforce functions. Make sure you check out our other episodes covering DevOps Center and Slack, two of the other big announcements at Dreamforce 2021. Thank you, everyone.